If you want to learn all the mathematics that you would ever need to know for computer science, this is probably the course for you. But I think the bigger question is, that should you learn the maths at all? Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to be reviewing the Mathematics for Computer Science free online open source course by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology Online Learning. This is the course that I personally did in the beginning of my journey of self-teaching computer science. And the purpose of this course is, as it states, to teach all the maths that you need to know for computer science specifically. It will go over topics like mathematical proofs, state machines, binary relations, graph theory, probability, and a lot more. Basically, all the mathematics that is used in computer science. I'm gonna be reviewing this course using the following criteria. Reputation, difficulty, quality of instruction, cost, as well as comprehensiveness. But make sure to watch it in the end because I think there are specific types of people who should definitely take this course and there are also different kinds of people who probably shouldn't take this course. But let's get started with the review. In terms of reputation, well, it's by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, who is a really renowned university. The lecturers and the people who have made this course are extremely renowned in the area of computer science. So I would say the reputation of this course is obviously extremely good. But so what are my thoughts on this course then? Well, first of all, in terms of difficulty, it is a very theoretical maths course, which I mean, it is a maths course and maths is by definition theoretical. Thanks, Captain Obvious. And it is a rigorous course as well. It's not like necessarily meant to just teach you like some high level ideas. No, it is a very rigorous maths course that teaches maths in a very mathsy, rigorous way. But even beyond that, I think it's structured really well in the sense that the problems will challenge you. You won't be able to solve the problems by just copying something that you found on the textbook or from the lectures. They are actually going to challenge you to think and apply the things that you're learning, which I think the number one requirement that every good course should have. In terms of the structure of the course itself, it's divided into four sections and each of them have first lecture videos that go over the topics of that section. And then you also have an accompanying textbook slash like lecture notes that you will be using along the way. And online, the course itself has quizzes to test your knowledge, but the textbook itself has a lot more problems as well for you to really drill down and really make sure you understand what you're learning. The only real downside with the problems is that it doesn't have solutions. And it seems to be the case with so many of like maths courses is that they don't like to provide solutions to students because there's some there's really this belief on like the math lecturer community that there's no such thing as a model solution. You need to find your own solution, blah, blah, blah. But like it's not very helpful when you don't provide any sort of even answers to like, so just so that we know that we've done it right, essentially. I had the same problems with my mathematics for economics course that I did part of my university degree. That's just, so that's what boggles my mind. And this is the only reason why I wasn't able to do a lot of the exercises because I didn't want to do it when I wouldn't have any idea of whether I'm even doing it right. And so that was just quite demotivated as when it came to the exercises. That is probably the biggest downside of the course, in my opinion. In terms of the quality of instruction and how engaging it is, it's not like the most engaging in the world, but at the same time, it's better than a lot of the university professors that I had in my own university degree, for example. I think the teaching is good. I think the textbook explains things well, but they are very mathematical explanations. And as I said before, it is a very theoretical course. You do need to spend a lot of time thinking. You probably need to read through the same thing a couple of times to really understand these things because they are not easy and math is not easy. So not much else I can say about that, really. You do need to have like high school level math down when you go into this. Like you need to understand algebra, probably calculus is helpful because essentially this is a university level course. You, you can't just go into it not knowing anything about math if you don't know, understand the basics of algebra. But if you don't math at high school, you should have that. But beyond that, I think it's reasonably approachable as far as maths go. So not much to complain there. And in terms of cost, it is completely free. You can do it for completely free online. In terms of comprehensiveness, well, it's very thorough. It teaches all the maths that you would ever need to know in terms of computer science. I believe with the exception of linear algebra, and maybe there's some like other topics of math you would still need to learn if you go into the specific areas where these are useful. For example, I'm trying to self-teach AI right now. And for that, I do need to understand linear algebra or so matrices and vectors. And this course doesn't go over that. So there are some areas which you would need to study separately to this. But basically, most of the maths for like the broad areas of computer science and programming, this course teaches 
ETGC. So it's very comprehensive. But this is sort of where we come to the main point that I wanted to get across here. There are a lot of people, like for example, if you just want to learn to build websites, you just want to learn web development, you just want to become a good programmer, and you don't specifically care about the theory of computer science, and like all the different areas of computer science, like cryptography and all these different things that you won't even need as a programmer, you probably don't need to do this course. You probably don't need to learn all the things that this course teaches you. There are some areas of the course which you should absolutely understand if you wanna be a great programmer down the line, like specifically graph theory, especially if you wanna apply for a lot of the big tech companies, they will have data structures and algorithms based interviews and a big part of data structures and algorithms in programming is graphs and to understand graphs is really helpful to understand a graph theory. You kind of need to understand mathematical proofs because the, the way a lot of the running times of algorithms are proven are using these inductive methods, for example, that you will learn in the first part of the course. So I would say there's sort of two types of people with this. On one hand, people who really want to understand everything about not only programming, but computer science. And specifically, if you want to apply to and get into the top, top companies. For this, it's undeniable that there are some areas of the maths of computer science that you absolutely should understand. Because programming at the end of the day is based on computer science, which itself is a subset of math. On the other hand, there's a lot of people who don't perhaps care about getting into the fan companies or you just want to be a programmer at like an insurance company or something like that. Who knows how to build websites, that kind of stuff. You can build a really great career, never even knowing any of these things. But even beyond that, I am definitely in this camp or like I want to learn more, even if some of it is going to be useful, like just in case there is that 0.01% of cases where it's going to be helpful, where it's going to put me above some other programmer who doesn't understand some of the underlying detail. So for me, doing this course was worthy. I would say for a lot of people, actually what you probably should do is just focus on learning to code and then along the way, figuring out if there are any parts of math that are useful in the specific area that you're going into and then just learning that. But if you do decide to do a course on math for computer science, this is the course. This is probably the only course, that I, at least the only course that I could find online that is free, that teaches you all of it in one place. So if you do wanna learn it, then this course gets a big thumbs up. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to hit the like button down below in the description because it shows YouTube algorithm that this video was helpful to you and it may make it show it to more people. Now, if you're new to this channel, you're very welcome. My name is Internet Make Coder and this channel is a place for people just like me who are teaching themselves coding and computer science. So the purpose of the channel is for me to give to you everything that I have learned along my own journey of self-teaching coding and computer science. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss my next video. If you want to avoid the biggest mistakes that most people make when they're learning to code, I highly recommend you watch this video where I discuss the mistakes that I often see people making when they're learning to code that you should definitely avoid if you don't want to be part of the majority, aka the people who fail to learn to code. But with that, let's keep coding and remember to have a good time along the way. See you next time.